No, looky here, looky here. <laughs> so many of you good kin folk in here. It's a blessing to have each and every one of you. And I know, I know, I'm showing my old ugly face. I know it. I apologize in advance. Uh, but I got some stuff in the P.O. box, you know. And I, I, I wanted to show you folks. And uh, like I said, I, lo I, I, I love hearing from you folks and things like that. You know, I, I absolutely love it. But I want to show you some stuff people sent in already to the P.O. box. And if you, you want to send anything, the link, the link, the P.O. box number is pinned to the top up there. Now, the first stuff here is was sent in. Uh, we got from our uh, awesome sister, Cheryl with Courage, and uh, her husband, Buck. Now, old Buck, he does a lot of uh, leather work and stuff like that, you know. And uh, he made me this really neat bracelet. And uh, send me a lighter case. And look here. Look here. Check this out. Homemade leather wallet that I've used. Um, got a homemade leather SD card. All my Appalachian videos is on right there. Yeah, buddy. Now, as we all know, our awesome brother, good old Ken Folk. John Boy Art had a book coming out, you know. It's here, folks. <laughs> Looky there. And boy, he done mighty good. Now, the actual poem and stuff in here is by another feller. But now our awesome brother, John, John Boy, I said, he done all the artwork in it. And I want you to look what a mighty good job he done. Yes, sir. Look at all that. There's all kinds of good stuff in there. And, of course, he did all the graphics. Thanks so much for that, brother. Now, you can get yours on Amazon, too, but you can also get in touch with our awesome brother, John Boyard, to get your copy. Next. Now, folks, this is something that I hold, you know, now, it, this is something really respectful. Uh, a lady named uh, Miss Daisy Davis sent me something that was handed down through her family. Look at this old walking cane here. Look at there. Oh. Now this was hand carved back in the mountains. Way back here in the hills of Tennessee. And this goes back to the early 1900s. She wanted me to have that. Said so she knowed I'd take care of it and appreciate it. And Lord, I sure have. I've treated that like gold. One more thing we got here. Then we'll get into stories here in just a few minutes. Last one. Comes from a mighty good set of folks right here who also sent a story. This is the Venata family. Uh, it says, uh, to Jordan family, this is Heidi there, Joanne, Danny, and Dusty. Uh said, Danny made these. And thought you might like them. So he envisions this kind of stuff and just enjoys doing it. Kind of like I do with my woodwork and stuff, you know. And uh, so we enjoy listening to the stories and can't wait to hear ours. God bless the Venata family. Looky there. It ain't that it ain't that pretty. That's nice right there. And look at this. Look at this right here. Looky there. How about that? Ain't that something? You can get that in there. That's awfully good right there. Boy, I wish I could do stuff that good right there. And I want you to look at this in here. Get back here a little bit. Old Muse. Kind of like that old song. Three dollar Mew. <laughs> oh, ain't that something. I appreciate each and every one of you folks sending stuff in, and there's some more stuff on the way. And I said, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. <laughs> All right, now, I'll say we're getting to some good old Hank stories. Mm -hmm. All right. There we 
go. Sorry, fellas, lady fellas. I'm trying to get my, all my ducks in a row here. <laughs> all righty now. Like I said, hope all you folks is having a mighty good evening. All right now. Our awesome sister. I said, uh, and brothers, and nephew. I said, uh, Renata family. I said, this is, uh, this is the one they sent in here. Uh, so now this one was sent in from by Danny. He said, I growed up in a rural part of Tennessee. Where we spent our days working hard and our nights coon hunting even harder. So there was just one holler. It's about five miles wide and seven miles long. There's all one family living down in there. Said one of them was a doctor. Said the rest were farmers and moonshiners. So well, me and six buddies decided to go hunting one night. We got back in that old holler. Turned the dogs loose. We were standing there from this old abandoned house, listening to the dogs run, just kind of hanging out and having a good old time. So, well, we got to hearing what sounded like somebody or something walking on the roof around the back side of the house. So we went around the back side of it and lit up that whole house. We went around back and everything, they weren't nothing there. We heard it on the front side, so we split up. That way, we have both sides lit up. We waited till we heard it again. So, well, when we heard it again, we lit it up like the Fourth of July, but still didn't see nary thing. Some old dog even come back to me. We were still trying to figure out what was walking on top of his house. So, well, by this time, it moved to the inside of the house. Sounded like the floorboards was being ripped up from underneath the house. So my old told, I told my old dog, said, to get it. Boy, she run in that house, and it sounded like all heck was breaking loose in there. She was tearing it up, whatever it was. Boy, my old dog was giving it to her, boy. I said after a few minutes, this come out. But nothing else did. Check my dog over and over. Didn't see not the first scratch or wound of any kind. And my friends got scared. And we's ready to leave. So I'm not the kind of back down from anything, but we left anyway. So we went a hunting in that same holler many times after that, but never had any problems. One of my friends' mama told us not to ever go hunting on Sunday, especially on Sunday night. So if we went hunting on Sunday night, said so we'd see, said so we'd tree the devil. In turn, I told her, if we tree the devil, we'll shoot him. Moral of the story. Don't ever go hunting on Sunday. <laughs> well, Danny, I sure do appreciate you sending that in, brother. Oh, we got some mighty good kinfolk in here. Sure enough, sure enough. Yes, sir. Mighty good kinfolk. Lord, boy, like I said, we got a whole mess of good stories and things like that. 
got some sent in. I'm going to be reading some that was in the comment section, stuff like that, people's left, and things like that I've been saving up. Like I said, it be mighty good. But yeah, folks, I said, uh, if you want to send any stories in or anything like that, I said that the P, uh, the PO box is up there. If you want to send any stories in, you can write them in if you want to, or like I said, you can send them to my email, which is scrolling all the information scrolling up there and things like that now here's one but now this one right here is just a little bit different see I had another one sent in another book by this and now this is by an author and she does some mighty good stories. So they, I said, they spooky, boy. This is called The Guarding Angel. Yeah, yeah, no, not The Guarding Angel. I'm sorry, just Guarding Angel. Right here it is. Autographed it for me and everything. I said, now. now. This is, like I said, pretty wild now. Now, like I said, now she wrote this, and like I said, she's actually an author of quite a few, you know, quite a few books and stuff. And, uh, well, what it is, what it's about is uh, a young un, and the young un's name is Angel. Angel was a little old girl living in the mountains of West Virginia with her mom and her granny. And her daddy was, sadly, he lost his life in an automobile accident, you know, just after her first birthday when she's little. Well, her mama said it took her daddy's death, you know, real hard and stuff, you know. Well, she become distant and kind of acting weird things. And nobody's allowed to go upstairs. Well, before they know it, all of a sudden, she started dabbling in witchcraft. You know, and all kinds of bad stuff and things like that. Well, then she started being mean to Angel. Well, her grandma walked in one day caught her being mean to Angel. And oh, you know how Grandma'd be. Oh, yeah. Said her Grandma run and got her switch. Said her Grandma wore her mama out and said, how do you like it? Everything. Well, said her Grandma vowed to protect her. You know, from then on. Yeah, one day, she made a new friend. Said her daughter named Carol. Same age and everything. And said they quickly become real good friends. Said Carol, you know, said Angel trusted Carol, you know, told her, you know, I always say like a young would do, you know. Said, well, one morning, in order to, uh, you know, kind of show off in front of Carol, said uh, their mama brought Angel a puppy. Well, the puppy, a golden retriever, you know, it grew, you know, real loving, protective, and things like that. Well, it went on and on and on. And said that, you know, even if uh, her mama would look at the angel the wrong way, said the old dog, oh, said, Phew. It just go off, boy, and things like that. 
And now, like I said, there's a whole lot more of this old story here. Here they. And it even is part of a series. Like I said, you can get on Amazon and stuff like that. Now, if you just want to hear more, I'll read more on it on this Wednesday stream. Like I said, if you guys would like to hear more. Oh, we even got some more folks coming in. Yes, ma'am. You better believe it. <laughs> yes, LJ, just share it on Facebook. Well, thank you kindly. God bless you for that. Hey, there's Joanna, Danny. I just read your story. <laughs> Everybody loved it. I know just as much as I did. That was a mighty good one, too. Mm. Now, now we can kind of ease over into the, uh, to the comments. Folks has left some pretty good little old stories in there. Now, this one is from LT Warrior. He says, I got a good story. Back in old Ireland. So there's this church. You know, so there's this church man, you know. And said he didn't believe in our uh, Irish folklore or nothing like that. No. So he thought it was all fake. So one night said he got drunk on some mighty strong whiskey. So that night, said he started walking home. And come across the ferry. So that old ferry tricked him. With gold. Well, I said he put it in his pockets, you know, in his hands and stuff. Well, I said when he pulled it out, said it was horse manure. I said that old fairy scared him so bad, so he ran all the way home, told his wife about it. I said from then on, so he never put down any kind of old folklore or anything like that. Hey, Casey, how you doing? Uh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, John. So, oh, dang, we missed it. Well, that's all right. Like I said, yes, can you always go back and read? You can go back and rewatch. Now, here's one here. Now, it ain't really a Hank story, but now I tell you, it's it's in, it's interesting, and it just goes to show you like what you know. Folks did different back in, you know. This is from uh, Cheryl Atkinson. She said, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my grandparents. So my granddaddy he was a carpenter at a phosphate mine here in Florida. So my granny was a good seamstress. So it's told to help folks out and their loved ones and stuff like that and everything way pass away and hills and stuff like that. And granddaddy said he would make them coffins. So my grandma said she'd line them in cloth from silk or stuff. You know, it's all kind of different ones. She said, not exactly sure, but I know they was beautiful. And that just shows you right there how folks would come together, especially back in them old days and stuff like that, especially in a time of need. Here's one from Tiffany Roberts. Said, I had a neighbor growing up. Said, he lived right next door to me for most of my childhood. Said, we called her Miss Louise. In, ele in elementary school, I started getting seed warts all over my knees and all over my fingers and all. And I remember her taking them away. Said, she just talked to them and almost immediately. They went away. And I thought, oh, Lord, just go show you more faith healers and stuff like that, you know. And I've heard a lot of different ways about them old healers, too, say that, uh, you know, some of them would uh, say they'd buy them from you or something like that, things, you know, just all kinds of different stuff. 
ね。Uh, yeah. Uh, here's one.、Uh, Moloch Sorcery says, Greetings, Jared. Just found your channel. And I'm up in North Central Ohio region. Grew up with Granny Witch, a source of all sorts. As well as we love both you know, folklore and stuff like that, as well as you know, historical family customs and traditions. And, My grandma was from a、uh, uh, Penn Dutch descendant, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, and said、uh, she had a very strong gift in what she called second sight. So a lot of folks know it as、uh, kind of like clairvoyancy and stuff, you know, so that's what they called them, you know. Since、so、she often saw deceased family members. And pets like that in our family's homes. Well, it says she also was oddly accurate when she'd use a Ouija board and told me her various intentions when haunted homes and stuff when she'd babysit us as a teen. I said, There's something. Said, I've been watching your channel and noticing a lot about the healing and stuff like that. Have you ever heard a potato onion ring healing spell? She said, I also interacted with a former circus、uh, stunt show performer. She, she knew who had a natural healing ability. She, older life fella, and said, He used to read my hand. So I had an old ringworm on my hand. She, said, He used to tater. She, you know, said, I'll be at local lore states. You can also use an onion. Said, but old Bill said he cut that tater in half. Said, he rubbed one half of the tater on the red ring on my hand. Said, he mumbled something under his breath. Said, my guess is, Bible verse, said, possibly Psalm 23. Said, when he closed his eyes, said, he prayed holding my hand for about a minute. Said, then he wrapped the other half of that tater. Which he used to rub on my hand in a clean white cloth. Yeah, in a clean white cl-、uh, handkerchief, you know, like cloth like. Said, and he told me to hold on to it for 30 days. Don't get rid of it, or else the ringworm will grow bigger. Said, but once that tater had rotted away, the ringworm will be completely healed. Said, I need to take it the other half, unwrapped, out to the woods. And bury it. And I thought, Lord. But now that's one thing about it.、And、I don't fool with Ouija boards. You. But, you know, even though I don't, I, I know there are a lot of folks out there that do. You know. Hey, Josh. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. But、uh, now, this one is from a comment that was left by Farkas. He says, My homeland is full of snow, my friend. I love your videos. I have a story from my homeland. It's a story about a woman who didn't trust a visitor at her husband's house. Her husband and her children trusted him. So she went in the visitor's room that night and took his life. Well, so after that, he had cursed the husband's wife. And after she passed, she was doomed to roam my homeland for eternity. I thought that was pretty wild. Now, here's one from Justin McKay. He said, I saw a haint before. See, it was a haint of an old Confederate soldier or a Union soldier. Couldn't really make it out. They said, it was awful dark. He said, I only saw the shatter. 
I said, but I saw it when I was little and on the trampoline in Trenton, South Carolina. Now, boy, that'd be something to say as a young, wouldn't it? Now, here's one from her awesome sister, Joni. And I said, now, I'm going to make a video out of this, one, but I want to tell it on here, too. And uh, I got another few stories coming here in a little bit, too, from our awesome brother right here, Alligator Horse. And some more good folks. All right. And I said, this is from Joni. Now, this one right here comes from the Ozarks. There's now a lot of folks, in case, you know, anybody didn't see the mother video, a lot of folks may be saying, you know, why are you doing a uh, story about the Ozarks? Well, if you look back in your history, some of the earliest settlers in the Ozarks was Appalachian. But anyway, Joni says, so I'm right here above the Ozarks. So I live here in southeast Missouri. So my great-grandma's family was from Virginia. So they come to the Ozark Mountains, and even eventually, her mom and daddy. And they moved up north to southeast Missouri. And she's one that taught me a lot of things about being a kitchen witch, as she called herself, which was just an herb healer and things. As I listened to everything she told me, so she'd get out her hymn book and have me sing songs with her and stuff, and told me about the Lord, and God, and Jesus. Told me about life, and life weren't easy, but to always be thankful. Be strong. Said weak women always fall to the wayside. She said, be strong, my Jonas. That's why she always called me. So I was her great-granddaughter. Said, but she loved me as if, as if I was her best friend in all the world. And I know she still watches over me. And I had a heart attack a few years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was a little scared after the EMS fella loaded me into the ambulance. I started to cry a little bit. So he, so he rest over and touched my hand and said, It'll be okay, Jonah. So at that moment, I stopped crying. And then I knew not only was God with me, but my granny was there too, in spirit, watching over me, even after 30 years of being gone. And I still miss her to this day. And boy, I thought that was an extra good one right there. All right. Here's one. Comes from. Oh, you're very welcome, sister. And thank you for sharing that with us. This comes from uh, the Irish Danny boy. He said, my mama, Lenny Faye Payne, she said, boy, she's a hillbilly through and through from Mount Airy. He said, I love these old stories. And besides all my summers spent out on the backer farm at my aunt and uncles and cousins, I can testify how frightened it was way out yonder, you know, up in them mountains. So as a youngin, Definitely scared the heck out of me, especially at night. So I always felt like something was out there in them woods behind the house. Sometimes at the bedroom window, faced them old woods. And not just haints, squats, but aliens, UFOs. Nothing around us for miles and miles other than Granny's house, about a quarter of a mile down the road. 
but my aunt's now since passed. Said, but I miss her very much. Never forget all my summers up there in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Best part of my childhood. And I thought, Lord, that's a mighty, mighty good. You know, because a lot of things, one of the things folks don't think about in these old hills and stuff like that. I've seen all kinds of strange lights and stuff like that in the sky. And, whew, Lord. Howdy, Liz. How you doing? Thank you kindly for coming in hanging out with us. Yeah. Here's one. Sean Ashinger. He said, Jerry, you do a mighty good job with these old stories. He said, dude, take this and work your magic. <laughs> he said, this old story took place in Harlan County, Kentucky. Around the area called High Splint. Said, my two great uncles, who was brothers, worked as loggers back in the 1930s. Said, when they was real young fellers, said, they worked every day. Started early and ended late. Never failed. Done that every day like clockwork. Said, they had to work. Uh, they had to walk everywhere they went back in because times was tough and only very few people back in had cars and things like that. Yeah. So well, my two uncles said they was honest people and they weren't the type to make any kind of stories up neither. Said so they was fixing breakfast one morning and Uncle Doc saw something and he looked out the window. He said they looked out and said something was looking back at him with yellowish glowing eyes. And they're sitting there staring at him. So had to be something big. Because them windows weren't too awful low to the ground. So everybody was scared. So as old people said, there was no painter, as they called it. That was there, around in them areas. See, any time they cooked out or dark, it'd show up. He was said to have once got up on the roof and tried to get down in through, uh, get into them down through the chimney. See, ever since I could remember. At random times so that you hear that old painter scream out like a woman, but you never see anything. I said, Hey, Donnie, how you doing, brother? I ain't no problem at all. We just sat around here jawing, telling stories. <laughs> Hope you have a good one, brother. So, Uncle Doc, so he told this story all my life, never changed it. And he lived to be pretty near 87 year old and still told every detail. Said, now there's still things that goes on. Animals randomly killed and carried off into the mountains. Said, now the strange thing is that sometimes you'll hear a loud whoop. That sounds like the same thing I've heard on many of Bigfoot documentaries and stories. So to this day, I wonder, what is roaming these old mountains? What is it people catching on these trail cameras? Sometimes random dogs will start barking, crying, yelping like, you know, something's trying to kill them. Garbage gets destroyed. There's probably a bear or something or other, but so far, we ain't explained, I ain't found nothing to explain them knocks and whooping sounds. It just happens at random times. Hey, Sherry, how you doing, sister? And there's Jan, how you doing, sister? How you doing? And Laura's Melissa, how you doing, sister? Mighty good to see you. Missions and love you bunches. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, like I said, I thought them was mighty good. Here's one. Talking about old witches. Sent in by LK4AHRO. And then left as a comment. Said, had a woman change. Change form. From a human face to a cat face. Said her eyes slanted black. Her slanted back. Said her jaw lengthened out. Kind of like a cat. I was working as a med student. Said the whole class of nursing students. Everybody saw it. Right there in the hospital. Head nurse and everybody. Said everybody's eyes all bugged out and her mouth dropped. Said, now I'm a Christian now. And said, what well, it was? Said she hated me. Said when she left, one little girl said her eyes still, you know, said showing all the whites around. She was secure. Said, what was that? Said, I said, that was a witch. I said, at that moment, she walked back out and gave me the dirtiest look you ever seen in your life. And said, I want every one of you to know my beliefs are not like most people. Said, I'm a witch. Big as Texas. I thought, Lord. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. It might have been me stubbing my big toe up trying to Get me a sandwich late at night. <laughs> oh, me. Now, let's see here. Mm hmm. Yeah, and here's one. Tony Robertson. So we begin. My great grandpa lives on Hampton Creek. And his cabin was still there when I was growing up. And I sat on the porch in that old log cabin many a time. Right up the hill from the creek, I sat on that old porch of his cabin. The person could look out, see the dirt road, the wooden bridge. This old dirt road went right between two big old fields, built on either side of it. Well, my great great aunt, or my great aunts, said you used to walk about this. In 1885, the Allens had a cornfield across the creek. My great-grandpa, Elijah Allen, had a little sister by the name of Melinda. Her 15th birthday was coming up. And her daddy bought her a horse. So now, saying this a few days after she got the horse, her brothers come in from working in the fields and told her that daddy wanted to, wanted to hurt, uh, hitch up one of the old work mules, bring it down to the fields and help them. Well, I says she did what she told, says she hitched up the old horse instead. I said, but this horse, it weren't, it weren't used to wearing anything, any kind of plowing gear or nothing. Well, I said, when she reached the creek, riding that old horse, said the whole horse got spooked. Reared up. Her foot got caught in that old horse. Sadly drug her clear up that old dirt road between them two cornfields. So by the time anybody could get to her, she was gone. So right there in that old dirt road between them two fields. So after that, my great aunts talked many nights about sitting on the porch. And seeing a light bobbing up and down on that old dirt road. And when it got to the creek, it would disappear. So my grandpa Allen said they all got used to seeing that old light. 
he said, it looked like somebody carrying a lantern, except that it bounced, you know, kind of high. Then it would come back down. Said that light bounced, and would go out of sight as soon as it reached the old creek. Said my mama told me, said she had even seen it once. I said, now this and it doesn't from Tony. I said, now this happened around 1916. I said, now my grandpa Allen worked at the Copper Mines located in Ducktown, Tennessee, and Copper Hill, Tennessee. And back then, you either walked or rode on a mule or something like that. And Copper Hill was about 20 miles from Hemptown. So my grandpa would stay over in Ducktown through the work week, uh, through the work week, because 20 miles on a mule, that was a mighty long ways. Now, my grandpa and grandma hadn't been married long. They moved from Hemptown about five miles away to a place called Morganton, Morganton, Georgia. So my grandpa, my grandma, Alan, said the house was old. So it had newspaper up on the wall. Of course, back then, you know, that's what they'd use for insulation, stuff like that a lot of times. And, of course, no running water in the house. But there was a well outside at the edge of the porch. So one night, my grandma's brother and his wife come to spend the night with her. So now this was during one of the nights that my grandpa had stayed over in Copper Hill. She told this story so many times over the years to different people that I remember this story word for word. Because when she told the story, it never changed. Now, on this particular day, that her brother and his wife come by, and Grandma said it was bitter cold, boy. I mean, bitter cold. She remembered thinking, well, they need to put more newspaper up on these walls. She said it was so cold in that house. That person had to drag a chair up and sat there right in front of the fireplace. Now, I'll pause right there for just a second. I want to say that uh, back there in the old cabin, we growed up in and stuff and everything, and I lived in things like that. I can't honestly vouch for it that there. during the winter time, and we eventually got a big old stove put in there, you know, cast iron stove. But there was a lot of times we just used the far uh, the fireplace, and uh, using just a simple fireplace during the heavy part of the winter, you'll freeze to death. Them old logs they'll get old and pop and crack stuff and let air in, it, especially if the chink between the logs ain't that good. Uh, anyhow, so later on. Said round dark. Said she went to get some water out of the bucket in the kitchen, and it was froze. Well, says she's about to thirst to death. Says she wrapped up in her shawls and made her sister go, uh, sister-in-law go outside with her. That cause my grandpa, uh, grandma said there was a pack of wild dogs around there. Says she's afraid to go out there by herself after dark. Well, her sister-in-law stood at the door and waited on her. Said she wouldn't go no further than the front door. Well, Grandma says she got to the well and put the bucket on to lower it down in there. When she said that, uh, said she was uh, bringing the bucket back up. Said she caught something or other out of the corner of her eye. Said she turned around and looked at it. Said there at the edge of the yard. 
stood a little girl, about five year old, and long blonde curly hair, had a little old white dress on with a blue sash. Says she had big old blue eyes. Says she was just standing there with her arms down by her sides and was a smiling at her. Grandma said it was like a glowing light all around that young. Says she could see her plain as day. Says she remember thinking she couldn't let go of that bucket. Cause they said it was full of water. Said if she did, it if you know it'd fall back down the well. So she hollered for her sister in law. Well, I said she didn't answer. Said she looked back at the front door, looking to see why her sister in law weren't answering. She said when she looked back, the little girl was gone. Now, my grandma said she didn't care about getting the water after that. Because she said that she scared her half to death. She said she didn't sleep a wink after that night. Sam was fighting mad at her sister-in-law for leaving her outside alone. Said after a few weeks later, that the man they was renting a house from come by. Naturally, since it was around dinner time, they invited him in to stay, you know, and buy to eat. Well, I said my grandpa started talking about something to do with the well. That's when my grandma thought of telling him what she'd seen. Said his eyes got as big and red, boy, a big around a silver dollar. Said he asked her, said, describe that little girl. Well, said she did. Said she thought he was going to faint. Said he just turned white like all the blood had just rushed out of his face. Said he told him, said about 20 years back that a family had lived there. And said they had a little old gal that fell off the high end of the porch and broke her neck. And he remembered coming to pay his respects at the house where they had her had her funeral there. And said and there she laid in a white dress with a blue sash. Now, Lord, I tell you what's the truth. That and right there, whoo, that's another one of them. I'd have messed my britches. <laughs> hey, Jaguar, how you doing, brother? Oh, yeah, them old pig boy, they will. Hey, BB, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Jana, Marcia. Laura, Kyle, how you doing, brother? Who let Spooky Appalachia in here? <laughs> I bet he's mad, ain't he? <laughs> I know I see another good one in here. See, there's Fowl. How you doing? Good to see you. Where is he at? Where is he at? Oh, there's Snow Leopard. How you doing, brother? Mm -hmm. There he is right there. Keeping Appalachia. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. There's old Frank. How you doing, brother? Hey, there's Grayson. Left in the past. One away from 550. Oh, boy, I tell you what. Old Grayson's doing mighty good, folks. If you ain't got him, be sure and grab him up. He's only one way. I believe we can oblige him with that. Hey, Randall, how you doing, brother? Yeah, sorry, brother. I've just, like I said, been uh, focusing on the stories and stuff and everything. But, yeah, I seen you. It's a blessing to have you with us, Randall. And there's Amber. How you doing, sister? Good to see you. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, John, you didn't have to do that. God bless you. Send a five dollar donation to Cash App. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. You didn't have to do that, but God bless you. <laughs> He's a now one away from five fifty one. <laughs> oh me. Randall says, it's a blessing to be here amidst my new, uh, my new family. Amen to that, brother. And we're blessed to have you here with us. Oh, Randall, he just recently got some good news, too. Just shows the power of prayer. Hey, Tara. How y'all doing? I know you have been doing some mighty good stuff down there. Sending him with and chewing and spitting. <laughs> Lord, it's a blessing to have you with us. Thank you kindly for being here. I'll tell you what I said. Now, Tony sent another good one, too. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Now, I so said this in here. So, this story is called The Dead Woods. Hey, Justin, I read that story, I that comment you left here a while back about the, seeing the Civil War soldier. Boy, everybody liked that, and I did, too. Now, Tony said, now, if you're sitting in my grandpa's porch, and you looked out at what I was told was the bluff, so that land is still owned by the Allens this day, so actually, a kid growing up back in the 70s, there was three miles up a dirt road. The entertainment was playing outside and in the woods or the creek or something other like that. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. I got a pause. I do got a pause for this. I want to say a great big... Uh, Amen. Thanks, everybody, for keeping Randall in your prayers because he said, yes, he said, I did. He said, his test showed no more cancer. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a great big amen right there, brother. It shows the power of prayer right there now. Yes, Lord. Amen to that. Hey, Bobby and Bubba. How y'all doing? Uh, anyhow, I said playing outside was in the, you know, playing back in was playing outside of the woods and the, you know, creek. And that's true. You know, back when I was growing up, my youngest asked me once, said, Daddy, what'd you do for entertainment back in? And I said, it was called outside. <laughs> anyway, Tony said, I'd get up on a Saturday watch cartoons, hit the outdoors. You come back in the house long enough to eat, go back out. You know, there was a place in the woods that, that we were told not to go, not even in broad daylight. So when I was a little girl, I said, I went there once and called this part of the woods the dead woods. Cause it had a strange feeling about it. Just unnaturally quiet. Man, I thank you so much, sister. God bless you. I know you've been commenting, watching these old videos and stories and things. Thank you so much. Love you bunches. Say, so just had a kind of an unnatural feeling to it and they were unnaturally quiet he said lord it's part of my time so i don't think the wind even made a sound there so this was up on the bluff so now i'd been there with my grandpa picking wild berries or gathering pine needles to cover up the taters with 
I said, but I wouldn't go there alone. Would not. So then, found out it was up there is where the Native American graves were. So the feeling that something was watching me was so strong that I knew if I didn't keep a close watch out, something was going to get me. It was that strong. And nothing made a sound there. No crickets nor critter. So, but every time we went to that part of the woods, yeah, my grandpa said it was a horrible experience. Scary, and said, I, I took my husband there. So not long after we got married, he said, because he was curious and wanted to see the Native American graves and stuff, and said, he was ready to go after only a few minutes. He said, because that part of the woods is protected by something unseen. And at the moment you're there, it's something, and it watches a person every move. Hey, Farkas, how you doing? Brother, good to see you. Thank you so much, brother. God bless you. Now, like I said, Here's one I want to tell. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Let me find a chair. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Video I just done. Uh, he said, "My brother says hello, and also my adopted daddy." Well, I'll tell your brother <clears throat> and your adopted daddy. The Jerry King TV says hello, and mighty thankful for them watching. Hey, kitty cats, it made alive! Yay! Let's slip back in and start catch up. Howdy, everybody. It's a blessing to have you with us. Oh, that's right. Amen to that. Yep, absolutely, brother. That's kind of what I was thinking, the Guardian. Hey, Lori. Listening to good old ghost stories and watching the train. Perfect evening. Oh, that's a good old combination right there. Hey, LeBron, how you doing, brother? Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. Uh, anyhow. Uh, I said, now this one comes from our good old awesome brother, Alligator Horse. He said, Jerry, here's a story. It always scared me, he said, when I was a sprout. That is still kind of creepy to this day. He said, now, I don't know who this man was. It was just a hank story that my family told. He said, it was said that the feller was a, always a single man with no family. So he had promised to a gal, but then backed out on her. I said there was a legend in that part of the hills that any man who wronged a woman would be haunted by a woman in white. Oh, God bless you, Iris. You too, Christian. Thank you, brother. Well, I'll thank each and every one of you for watching. God bless y'all. Hey, Jimbo. 
How you doing, brother? He said, one day, said, this young man had been out working his field when a storm started blowing up. Said, before it cut loose, he headed to his barn. And while he was feeding his mule corn and fodder, it let go and started raining high, mean, hard. Iris, thanks for hanging out with us, sister. It's a blessing to have you with us. Well, I said he didn't want to get wet, so, so he went up the ladder through the skull hole in his hayloft. And just kind of laid back on the hay, listened to the rain drum off, and you know, shakes the old barn roof. And man, listening to it rain, being tired, said he drifted off to sleep. When he woke up, the storm had raised to it, you know, massively. And it was now dark. Well, I said that didn't bother him too awful much, except he was getting, getting awful angry. Anyway, he said he laid back there on the hay again, said with his hands folded behind his head. Yeah, but this time, he didn't fall asleep. Hey, Drew, thank you so much, brother. So he laid there. It's a sudden lightning bolt. It lit up at old barn. Hey, Andrew, glad you did, sister. Lit up that old barn loft enough to said he could see all the way around him. Said that old loft had slatted walls to allow the hay to have air circulating over it. Said, well, when that bolt hit, said the man was looking up at the roof and swore that he saw a woman in a long white dress with an old-fashioned white hat standing on a barn beam looking down at him. The next time it lightened, an old lightning flashed. Said she weren't up on that beam. She was standing right at his feet, looking down at him. Boy, he let out a scream and leaped up, jumped through that old scuttle hole. So Lord, not even using the ladder. So he busted out of that barn and took off just as fast as his feet could carry him toward his house. See, when he reached the door, Said he looked back, and there he saw the woman in white gliding over the ground, headed right for him. Said he went in, slammed that old door, and for so he fired up every lamp he had in that house. And then he sat in the corner of that room and prayed that she'd go away. Well, I said he never saw her anymore. Never did see any more of that old Hank. I said, but the next day, according to the story, he went to the woman <clears throat> that he had done wrong and begged her for forgiveness. And then he married her right after that. I thought that one was extra good and right there, too. I 
I thought, Lord have mercy. Whew, I don't know what I'd do if I seen something like that. Let's see. There's one here Steve had sent me. Mm. Hey, Tony, there you are, sister. I was telling your stories there a minute ago. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending them in, sister. Oh, we've been, been enjoying them mighty good. Yeah, folks, we got a good surprise coming here pretty soon here in a few days or so. We're going to get to be getting meet up with our good old brother, Sean Cody. Boy, we're looking mighty forward to that one. Hey, Glenn, how you doing, brother? Boy, it's a blessing to have you with us. So grateful I made it to the show. Boy, it's awful good to have you here with us, brother. Sure is. So me too. Howdy, Jared, and everybody else. Love y'all. Well, Nancy, we love you too, sister. It's a blessing to have each and every one of y'all here with us and everybody home watching. I said, boy, it's mighty good folks here. Miss Susan says, love you, Hank, stories. God bless. Well, God bless you, sister. Thank you so much. So glad you enjoy them. And Lord knows. Like I said, I, it's just a blessing to have you here with us. Enjoy. Shoot, yeah, we have too, sister. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, let's see here. Now here's one sent to us. Now, uh, read you a little bit of this, and now, uh, Hey, Vins. How are you, my brother? It's awesome to see you. Lord, Colt, how you doing? Says, I'm, uh, says, I'm sicker than a dog soaking in this hot tub. It's a feel privilege catching where you lie. Well, it's a blessing to have you here with us, brother. And let me tell you, you are definitely in our prayers. So what kind of stories you got for us around Halloween? Oh, I got some mighty good stuff saved up for Halloween. Uh, now, this in here, this one comes from our good old sister, Miss Sally. I know everybody loved having Miss Sally on here and Especially me, too. Like I said, uh, we all love Miss Sally. And uh, they'll be glad to know Miss Sally will be coming back pretty soon. As well as Miss Kale. I said, well. Anyhow, Miss Sally says, Now, this is about the men in black. Now, the reason I'm mad in this is now, uh, there has been a lot of folks, apparently now, from what I can gather, there's some new types of beliefs going around. Some saying that the men in black could be aliens. I mean, you never know. Some folks now are believing that they're actual uh, type of paranormal. You know, said that, uh, you know, they, you know, it's something like that. That's why nobody can track them down. Vince said, my grandma asked about you. She said, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I'll tell your grandma. I said, God bless her. Thank you so, so much. 
and I'm doing mighty good, and I hope she is too. Hope she's having a blessed one. Uh, she said, this is about the men in black. She said, and you can take it for, you know, whatever you want. She said, but just know my ex-husband was a uh, Marine recon. And one of his station duties was guarding one of the multiple areas of Area 51. But anyhow. Uh, and he had the guard one said yes yeah, said there uh, there is a lot of stuff goes on there he must say he wouldn't tell me because I didn't, didn't want the men in black showing up here I said now, my entire family was military you know, on my daddy's side you're talking over 50 years of service going back to the civil war so I've heard more than once, and I've seen things that you just couldn't believe. I said, but what I want to know is what is everybody's thoughts on the men in black? Now, that's a mighty interesting right there. Now, you folks, uh, so what do you think about the men in black? You don't think it may be some paranormal or maybe something like uh secret service kind of stuff or you know things like that what do you guys think about it that's what i want to know Says she loves your videos. She loves them old stories. Well, bless her heart. Tell her I said thank you. That absolutely made my day right there. It sure enough did. I'm so glad she does. Laura said, if aliens were as smart as people claim, they wouldn't touch this marble. <laughs> BB said, CIA. That's very possible. Very possible. Jimmy said, I think it's Jerry. <laughs> Daryl said, I think they do exist, but they're more to intimidate and antagonize people. That's very possible. Very possible. Little Buck said, they used to have funerals in my grandma's house way back. It was so cold and haunted. Now, you know, that's something else that's interesting, too, now that you mentioned that, is, uh, you know, I know a lot of folks, you know, back in a lot of times, you know, whenever folks would pass, they'd, uh, you know, they'd have the funerals right there in the homes, you know. And sometimes they'd be one set house that they'd hold a funeral home, or they'd use as if like a funeral home. They'd be one house they'd use, uh, in, you know, in the local area and stuff. I've heard of, you know, people doing that. That's it, men in black, men who knew more than we want to know. Yeah, more than likely. It's still Jesus. Men in black are secret service like FBI. It makes a lot of sense. Of course, I think men in black's a government thing, so there's a lot of classified info we don't know about. So I'm thinking the men in black's one of them. Very possible. Into the darkness. Love your channel so much. It's like listening to a warm breeze on a summer night growing up in Mississippi. Lord, I tell you what, you folks gonna give me the big head talking like that. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm so, so glad and thankful you folks love watching and enjoying so much it just makes my day it sure does nancy said they exist and my daddy had him in his office a few times when he worked as a new jet fighter oh lord jan says that's for men in black it's part of the government 
Yep, I believe so too. Donnie said, hide the truth. Yep. Absolutely. Because, you know, that's one thing about it is they'd always, you know, when they say them old men in black hair, whenever they did show up, you know, said uh, they show up and tell people, you know, don't you say nothing, you know, stay hushed and stuff like that. Me and my Uncle Bubba and Dr. Henry, we saw glowing eyes in the woods at night, one night, uh, at nighttime, when we were traveling back for a picture show in some restaurant. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you know, Daryl, I've often thought that, too. I think if we knew, you know, if we knew you had... Uh, Knew all the things that went on. We wouldn't sleep at night. Yep, Dan said, probably don't want to know neither. Yeah, that's very possible. Very possible. Randall said, I've seen people sitting up with the dead. One on one end, one at the casket, one on the other end. I love these old stories. I'm so glad you do, brother. He said, the only truth I believe is the word of God and what I see with my own eyes. Josh said, I always try to get on and watch Jerry King's videos. I'm so glad you do, brother. God bless you. It's a blessing to have you watching. Yeah, very possible. Very possible. Justin said there's an old church in Edgefield, South Carolina called Horns Creek Baptist Church. And they say it's awful haunted. Oh, Here's another from my awesome sister, Tony. She said, when I was about 12 years old, said, my aunts and uncles, my cousins, come to the family reunion. Said, naturally. Hey, Julie, thank you so, so much for being here, sister. It's a blessing to have you with us, and thank you so, so much for enjoying it. So naturally, they stayed. And my grandpa and all us kids slept in the front room on pallets. So now I'm in the middle of the night. Then my cousin Terry woke everybody up in the house, saying he heard a woman screaming outside. Said he lived, so he lived in Michigan. They weren't familiar with painters or nothing like that well i said his daddy which grew up in harris georgia told him said that ain't no woman outside screaming he said a few nights later one of my uncles shot that old painter out of the top of an old pear tree that grew between the barn and one of the cornfields and they said that thing measured six foot from head to the tip of his tail so i remember seeing it when i i remember seeing it back when, in 1982 and that thing was solid black i tell you what whoo just seeing one of them old painters like that boy that whew, lord of mercy that do it right there Mm -hmm. Trying to find another one here. All right, here's nothing, like I said, from a good old brother. Hey, Shire. 
So you turn the tank comes out at night. <laughs> Story about the night I found a dead girl while on patrol. They had to sit where they're in the dark in an isolated place till backup come. Oh, Lord, yeah, brother, that'd be a mighty good one. But now, like I said, this story here is another from my awesome brother, our alligator horse. Johnny said, loving tonight's show. And praise reports in the comments. Prayers for everyone. Amen to that, sister. He said, here's an old story <clears throat> about one night when my great uncle Lee Davis, one of my grandma's brothers, was almost scared half to death. See, it was back in the 1920s. He said, Uncle Lee, who everybody called him Doc, And his buddy, Joan Ramsey, were on a bender. Having getting hold of some of that old pop skull whiskey made back in some holler. So Uncle Lee. Hey, Vodka, how you doing, sister? Good to see you. So Uncle Lee said he was drunker than a skunk. And so was Jode. Well, today's a staggering long ridge. Staggering long ridge road in the middle of the night. See, lightning began to flash. See, thunder. See, that old, old rumbling thunder. See, that old thunder that rumble. And taking a couple of minutes to fade out. See, it's rumbling back in them old mountains. And Uncle Lee said, to, said even drunk, he knowed they was about to get soaked. Hey, Kevin, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. So he told Joe that they needed to you know, get under some kind of cover. He said to Jode, so let's run up the ridge here. So let's run up the ridge, uh, ridge a ways. That old abandoned house. So let's get in that this rain that's coming. Hey, PW, how you doing, sister? Good to see you. So old Jode replied, everybody said that they's hanks in that old house. See, he didn't want to go in there and have nothing to do with that. So old Uncle Lee said, Ah, said, Hanks be better than get hit by lightning, wouldn't it? Said, I don't want to get hit by lightning on this old ridge road. Well, said they made the best time they could before long. Then they come up on that old abandoned house. Just as it started to rain. I said, Doc, I don't want to go in there. I said, about that time, I said, lightning started piling back up again. I said, when it did, I said, old lightning struck. Said and it hit real close. Said, as soon as it did that, he changed his mind. That old lightning hit and he jumped. Said, they tried the door. Said and it opened under Uncle Lee's hand. They stopped and looked at one another. Then went on in. Said Joe took a match. Said, raked it across the sea of his overalls. 
And they looked around the room. So Uncle Lee said the house was empty. Said not a stick of furniture. So they both just kind of stretched out on the old wooden floor there. Said they weren't too awful long. They was asleep. Well, sometime later, stays in our sleep. So old Joe woke up, roused up Uncle Lee. He said, Doc, listen. You hear that? Well, I said, it took a little bit for Uncle Lee to come to his senses. So he asked Joe, you know, so why'd you wake me up for? So he asked him, said, I asked you if you heard that noise. So what noise? So the noise under the floor. So be quiet and listen. I said, oh, Uncle Lee, about to tell Joe that all he heard was the rain. When he suddenly, they heard a strange quivering of coming up under them floorboards. It was just right below them. He said, I heard it. So they told him, he said, what do you think it was? I said, about that time, he said, they heard a whole bunch of commotion, movement and stuff, you know, coming up from out from under that house. So Joe cried out, oh, it's Hanks. So Uncle Lee said that they about killed one another trying to get out that front door at the same time. So drunk or not, storm or not, they didn't care. So they took off running as fast as they could down that road. So Uncle Lee later said, them noises scared him plumb sober. Well, the next day, so Lee was telling his brother Wesley about all of it. So old Wesley said he started laughing, so he laying back, so he was slapping his leg. So he told him, there ain't no hands underneath that old house. He said, oh, you don't understand now. So you, you should have, you had to be there. So he told him, no. Hey, Don, how you doing, sister? So glad you're here with us. God bless you. So he said, no, no, sir. So that old house was built on the side of the hill, just below that road. So the back side, it was still open that somebody turned out a flock of sheep in the pasture behind that old house. And said, well, what his Uncle Lee and Joe heard, them sheep getting in out of the storm going up and under that old house. <laughs> said his Uncle Lee told him some later, said, well, if he hadn't have been so drunk on shine, they said he could have recognized the sounds of the noises made by the sheep. Yeah, but boy, said, being about half lit, said, you, you just didn't take no, you know, didn't take no precautions. <laughs> oh, I thought that was a pretty good one right there. Oh, me. I said, now that, and I said, I, I like hearing ones like that from time to time. There's been a whole lot of times, folks, that swear up and down, they heard, they heard no haint. But, <laughs> but like I said, then, you know, it turned out to be something that could be explained, you know. Oh, Lord. Hey, CJ, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I appreciate that, brother. We 
Well, Joanne, uh, you know, I've heard about things like that. You know, a lot of folks may see that as a, a sign or a token, you know, coming through from a dream, something like that. I said, I've, I said, talk to a few people. And I said, I'm just waiting to hear back from, them, you know. <laughs> Howdy, Brad. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Thanks so much for coming in and hanging out with us. <laughs> Nothing worse than go sheep. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I said, here's nothing. Uh, from our awesome brother, our old uh, alligator horse. But next said, he's uh, seen quite a few stories. And I said, so glad he has. Cause I said, they some mighty good stories in there. Now then, he says, this is my story of an introduction to proof of things beyond our knowledge that try to break into our world. Uh, he said, it began as a game. Went through phases of entertainment, humor, and then sheer terror. So Christmas Day, back in 1997, and while visiting my in-laws, so the entire family had gone over to visit relatives. So, well, we returned to my in-laws' home around 6.30 in the evening. Well, we went to Oh, Lord, Lord. Whew. Uh, said nobody was in the house while he's gone. Said things looked the same when we come home as when we left. Excepting for one thing. My mother-in-law had a Christmas decoration that consisted of a little wooden train with a locomotive, caboose, and four low flat cars. So she kept this on the piano in the living room. So the four flat cars held wooden block letters that spelled out N-O-E-L. Noel. So, well, upon our return home, so I sat down in the living room, you know, it's decoration, and called out to my wife's mother and asked, uh, Hey, Donna, who's Leon? So the letters had been reversed and was now spelled L E O N. So she came in the living room and asked, what a man. Hey, Cynthia, thank you so much, sister. It's a blessing to have you with us. There's my awesome brother, Matthew. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Well, I said she kind of looked at him, kind of surprised, and asked, What are you talking about? I said, she Looked at me like I was pulling her leg. Well, it says she questioned everybody. It said everybody claimed innocence. Nobody had changed the letters. Well, I said after a quick supper, where the topic of conversation was the mystery of the decoration, said my mother-in-law finally said, 
Well, let's just see if we can find out who Leon is. Hey, Landsman, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Well, says so she went and got her old Ouija board out of the basement. Said, now, I'd never seen one like this in use. Said, so I decided to sit back and uh, be amused by the silliness of all of it. Uh, I said, my wife and mother-in-law volunteered to start. And, and you know, they did what they're supposed to do. And asked, who was Leon? Well, nothing. I so said, they waited and asked again, who's Leon? Well, then something started happening. It started to move real slowly. It took a while to misspell a couple of the words. So, but it answered, Leon is with me. So this answer, so they asked, you know, who they talking to, and it answered. Keeper at the gate of the garden. So whatever that man said, I didn't. Have, he said I didn't have a clue what this meant. So about this time, said so the evening turned into a. Said so it turned into more of a parlor game. Well, I so said people started to ask questions and things like that and stuff like that. Now, folks, I want to pause this and say now this isn't a mighty good story, but folks, don't ever touch one of them old Ouija boards. Don't ever do it. Stay away from him, old things. Oh, Tara, Lord have mercy. God bless you, sister. They just got home, but I've been listening. Been blessed today at work. So I wanted to bless you. Well, sister, God bless you for that. But it's a blessing just having you here with us. Thank you so, so much for that. But anyhow, I said uh, people started asking questions and stuff like that. And checking the accuracy and stuff. He said, but I still scoffed at kind of, you know, what the possibility, you know, that my wife and her mama was doing every bit of this as a joke. So finally, my mother-in-law suggested that I ask a question. Well, it took some ribbon of the rest of the crowd. So there's seven of us in total. Said, but not to be a wet blanket, I agreed to join in. Now, ask a question that nobody here knows, Donnie said. So, thinking of something easy, I decided to ask, what was the first car I had? It was a 55 Chevy. So I asked. That thing shoots over and answers no. We all looked at one another. Well, I was told to answer, ask it again, so I did. And again, it said no. Well, I said my mother-in-law asked if it was going to answer my question, and it said no. So when she asked why, said it refused to answer. So it spelled out skeptic. So then they asked, you know, why it called me a skeptic. And he replied, I can't see it through it. Dumbfounded. The question was asked to explain, you know, why I couldn't see it through me. It said too much light. Said, no, I never learned what that meant. I'm taking it as something good, maybe. So I'd rather have light in me than darkness. And the board said the same thing about my sister. So the night proceeded. Said it began moving on and off about different topics and things like that. And said, kept talking about, said, 
uh, original sin, man's corrupt. Uh, all kind of creepy stuff. And so all of a sudden, that thing started to move. It's real slow. It misspelled a lot of words. So as the night went on, then it, you know, gained in speed. The spelling got better and stuff. So eventually, that thing was flying all over that board. Everything else. He said, we got to writing them all down. And amazingly, they got, you know, forming sentences, paragraphs. See, it was mighty scary. Hey, Izzy, how you doing? Good to see you. So finally, my mother-in-law asked me if I believed it now. I told her I was, thought it was, you know, something behind the workings. So I know my wife's very intelligent and talented, but she would have, have rehearsed this thing for months to be able to do everything it did. Said so, my wife's mom asked the board if it would, you know, consider asking answering a question for me, and it said yes. And then finally, she said, answer the question, ask the question silently in your mind. So I said, all right. He said, so I did. I said, what was the name of my grandmother on my grandfather Simpson's side of the family? You know, I'd only recently learned her name, the Mariah. And it spelled out T-I-N-C-H. So I sat stunned, silenced, as everybody looked at me. Finally, I was asked my question, and what was the answer meant to me? And I explained that silently asked the name of my great-grandma, and everybody was tensed and waited for me to finish. I explained how I had, you know, learned the name Mariah. Tench was my great-grandma's maiden name before she married. Grandpa Simpson. I thought, Lord. Now, like I said, I'm going to pause it today and leave it right on that one right there. Like that, we're coming up on our end of the time here, but like I said, folks, that was, whoo. Like I said, that was a mighty good story, but folks, I'm telling you, like I said, don't air fool with them old Ouija boards. Like I said, eh, I know a lot of folks say, oh, they ain't nothing to it. Oh, they is too. Like I said, but it's, them old Ouija boards ain't nothing but just evil stuff. Like but yeah, like I said, it's been... An absolute blessing having you folks here with me tonight. And boy, these two hours is almost flew by. Lord knows that. And again, if uh, any of you folks want to send me anything, I said in the P.O. box is right there. It's a uh, pin at the top. It's also right there scrolling. It's 245. P.O. box 245, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. Yeah, good. You got any old stories you want to send or anything like that, feel free to send them to my email. Scrolling across there too. King Jared, 1981, gmail.com. I'm so glad you folks tuned in, hung out with me, stuff like that. I mean, it's just a just a blessing. Tara said, my stepson tried to bring one in the house. Nope, not in here. <laughs> Amen to that, sister. You said, right? Don't like sharing my coffee, neither. <laughs> Oh, Lord, he said, my sister-in-law tossed it when my mother-in-law died. Shoot, I don't blame you a bit, neither. Mm 
James, thank you so much, brother. Like I said, I just, I just said, love these old stories and stuff like that. But uh, one thing uh, I will ask is, I, I don't mind Hank's stories, or, you know, or some old witch stories or anything like that. But anything, if it's just too evil or something like that, I, I really don't want no stories like that. No, he said, thanks for the story, Jared. Well, Donnie, God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh, yeah, that's right. And you're about trouble, it usually comes. Sitting and willing and chewing and spitting. So thank you, brother Jared. Always enjoyable. Well, it's a blessing and pleasure to have you with us. Hey, Elizabeth. How you doing? She said, I'm late, but glad I caught you this live. Well, I'm glad you did, too. Well, Justin, brother, like I said, if you can think any more of them, like I said, send them to my email, brother. I'd love to hear them. I'm sure other folks would, too. Hey, A.T., I seen you pop in a minute ago. How you doing, brother? Hope you and the missus are doing mighty good. And, brother, you you absolutely rock, man. I love you all to pieces, like all you folks. Lord, where's Miss Billy? <laughs> you done gone and become a habit. <laughs> right up there with fried chicken on Sunday. Boy, that's a mighty good combination there. <laughs> good old stories and fried chicken. Well, brother, thank you so much for sending them in, brother. Like I said, Lord knows we got to, like I said, we love hearing them. The lives. All righty, E.T., I'll sure do that, brother. Amen to that, Donnie. You said a mouthful right there, my brother. Said, Keep the Lord in your heart. All will be fine. God bless. Amen to that. Big old amen. Well, folks, we're coming up on our time. So like I said, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming in and hanging out with us and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, I want to thank each and every one of you for Sharing me out. A lot of you folks been doing that and everything, telling you some you can about me and stuff like that. And just telling folks you know about me and stuff. Sharing me out. Now you don't you really don't know what that means to me. I will say I got a surprise coming for you folks. It's uh and it's actually for you folks. Uh like I said, uh hopefully be getting that here, hopefully next week or so. And uh I believe you guys are gonna like it and uh everything but it's something i want to do for you folks for sticking with me and just just being who you are just being yourself being the most amazing family here on youtube and just kin folk in general love each and every one of you as more as i'll ever know pw it's a blessing to have you with us sister well, folks, I guess I'll hash a minute. Everything. But, uh, uh, before I do go, like I said, one more time, I'll say that, um, if you want to send any stories in, send them to kingjared1981 gmail.com. If, uh, you have any, uh, Anything you want to send, I said to the P.O. box. It's up there, too. It's uh, Jerry King TV, P.O. box 245, McMillan, Tennessee, 37111. I'll leave it on a high note. How about it? <laughs> well, I love you bunches. God bless you and your kin. And let's go out with a hold down. How about you? Yee-hoo!